Hello everyone and welcome to part two of The Chosen One. Now, in the first episode, it was a real introduction to the characters and where the story might go. In this one, we're going to find out exactly what the premise of this all is. I hope you're ready. This one is going to blow your minds. Sit back, relax, and let's begin with part two of The Chosen One. Guards, open the gates. Ready the army, said the king. As William watched the king move towards a hidden door, he asked if he needed armor too. The king turned and laughed, ignoring William as the guards pushed the boy towards the same door. As they moved out into a large desert, it was clear the other side of the palace was the coast. But a coast with jungle and water? Now he was standing in the midst of what looked to be a giant country of sand dunes, like something out of a science fiction series called Space Wizards that William used to watch back home on repeat. The king stood out on the hill of sand, looking into the abyss as the scorching heat emanated from the ground, creating a distorted haze of waves in the air. As William glanced behind him, he saw no army. The king just stood there, waiting, with a smile on his face. My lord, said the advisor of the king, are you sure? The king rose one finger to silence his servant, who stepped back in cowardice. As William looked out into the distance as the king's servant offered him a scope, he saw what looked to be one figure in the distance. Zooming in with this advanced piece of technology, which he found so strange for such a primitive tribe, yet they seemed to be so technologically beyond Earth, he started to see that this figure was really just an older man in a dark cloak holding a scepter with an orb on top. The man was clean shaven, Handsome, broad, and tall, William gasped. He... he's... Uh, he... he's human, said William. The king frowned and said, Yes. But how? You said I was the only one here in the last 10,000 years. The king opened his mouth. And he was the other. William put the scope down, in shock. How... how is he still... Alive, said the king. He is your ancestor. You will soon learn. The prophecy foretold a being from your world would come to our salvation from the Yato, an evil, ancient, cruel peoples from another galaxy that enslaved our land for millennia. Until he came, developed his abilities under our guidance, and rivaled them. He beat them into submission, and we thought we were free. Until... Until the Yato made him an offer that he could not refuse. So he joined them, and every revolution of our sun returns to collect what the Yato desire. Our children, our kin. William listened intently, wide-eyed through the sun's glare. But what did they promise him? couldn't just promise him something better? Why would he do such a horrible thing? The king smirked. Child, we do not move in the ways of the dark magic. Everything comes with a price, and he chose his fate with his gift, for it went hand in hand with his enslavement. He just does not see it, and even if he did, it would change nothing. The king never broke his gaze on the other earthling still walking towards them. No army, just himself, alone. Strange, William thought. He was expecting a massive battle, an army of creatures that he had never seen before, much like the one in the ocean, or the ones on the island. But this was just one man. To be honest, he kind of just looked like some wizard that you would see at a carnival. William went quiet. This was far too much for him to handle. Was it too late to still think that he was dreaming? Was he too far in? You never answered my question. What did they offer him that would turn a human so corrupt and enslaved? <sighs> they promised him his dead wife and children to return to him in this world. They died on yours, and the Yato resurrected them into some abomination. The love in his heart was turned black with greed and selfish nature. He could not let them rest, he could not let go, and in return, takes our children every year for the Yato. We never see them again. 
William kept looking back and forth from the towering king to the human in the distance. What do they want with your children? We do not know for sure. They turn them into slaves, hoping one will exhibit powers just like him, so that they may control it. They want to find another one of him. William started to realize how dangerous this all was. And why can't you guys defeat him? He is like you, only due in existence. In time, you will learn to unlock your abilities and master them as he has. In time? I didn't sign up for any of this. What abilities? I'm just a human. We don't have ability. William felt the coldest of ice run down his back as the hot sun was just scorching his skin. He now felt unbelievably cold as he looked behind him. The same human that was in the distance so far away walking slowly was now standing several feet away. Too shocked and frozen to move, William was paralyzed. The king turned to him and spoke. Aravor, the rotation is not yet due for another several moon cycles. Why are you here? The man did not make eye contact, his large hooded cloak covering his eyes, his scepter sparkling in the sunlight as if smoke and sparks were swirling inside. I sensed something, said Aravor. Yes, one of my own. The king became aggressive and showed his teeth. He is not for you. You will not plague him with your shattered ideals you learned from those beasts. Ah, uh, still full of that temper. You'd think you would have more respect for your former student, but I guess respect isn't a thing of your people's. You dare talk to me of respect, Aravor? I should have you... Have me what? Do you remember last time? I spared your life. There is nothing you or your people can do to me. The king gritted his teeth and looked down upon Erevor, unable to do anything. He knew this warlock was too powerful and could destroy this place if he wished. That's a good little king, said Erevor. Now, bring the kin to me and I will be on my way. You are early! Yes, I am. And will you defy me? William found this whole situation horrible. He's going to take the children of the village? No. No, said William. You will not take any more children. Quiet, boy! Oh, said Erevor, turning his head slightly to William. Perhaps I shall take you instead. The king moved forwards to which Aravor twitched his upper lip and sent the king flying backwards into the sand. The guards all ran at Aravor who merely twisted his scepter slightly and reduced all of the guards to butterflies that caught on fire from the sun's heat. William watched in shock as they reduced to ash and floated away into the sky. With everything going on, he just realized that the sky was blue not green like where he had just come from before the door. What? Now, if you don't mind, go fetch them or I will walk through that portal and get them all myself as a consequence for being difficult. The king spoke into his wrist as he snarled, still laying in the sand, telling the advisor to bring the kin through. Bring the children. Erevor watched as the servant came through the door, which William just realized was another portal, and brought the children to him. Erevor grabbed the crying kids, winked and stomped his staff into the sand, sinking into it immediately and vanishing with the prisoners. As the grains of sand settled back down, the king rose to his feet, cursing the skies. We have to get them back. We have to find them. The king dropped to his knees as he bore his fists into the sands, his giant mitts creating craters in the dunes that sounded like thunder. <sighs> you cannot fathom the depths of his darkness. If it were not for the hold the Yato have on him, he would conquer everything under and over these stars. That is why you are our only hope. We have waited too long. And you will not squander our sacrifices for your childish dreams of becoming the hero so soon. You are not ready, and we do not have much time until the next cycle, upon which he will return and take more. 
Why didn't he just take me then? He fears your potential will rival his. If the Yato know of your existence... Boy, you will keep quiet. They will train you in their ways. They will take you and order you to destroy him in time. They do not trust him as much as he does not trust them. He is only loyal to them so long as they keep his family. The king paused. <sighs> Alive. There was a softness to his expression of the word, as if he, too, lost someone. Come. Whoa, hey, look, I didn't sign up for this. I just want to go back home. I'm sorry that you have these problems, I'm sorry for everything, but this has nothing to do with me. I just came here by accident, and I just want to go home. The king smiled and rested his large hand on William's shoulder. Where do you think the Yato will go once they have taken all of our children? The eye opens only for the Chosen One. He is the other half, and together you make one. Two souls split from a singular. That is why he left you here. He hates our enemies as much as we do, but he is a slave to his attachments. He cannot let go, and in turn he suffers. We suffer, and he will never be free, and neither will we. Your world is now next, that the eye has been reopened. He will find it, and he will never stop. For if he does, his wife will die again and again forever. And then there is no bounds that his power knows, no rage big enough that would cure his pain. He will turn everything you have loved into fire and ash as he makes you... The king paused, looking away, his face contorting fighting as hard as he could to hold back whatever emotion was being contained like an overflowing dam in his soul. He changed his tune, grabbed William by the back of the neck and walked him through the door, portaling them back to the palace. Gods, ready the chamber. Your training begins now. I hope you all enjoyed episode two. What do you think William's potential is? Does he actually have the ability to defeat this other chosen one that's been there for so many thousands of years? Will they be able to get the children back? Are they all still alive? Do any of them have any powers? How powerful are the Yato? They are more powerful than the king and his people, but not as powerful as Erevor. What did the king mean by Erevor and William sharing some soul, as if two were split from one? What if they were to come together? What if one were to perish? Let me know what you think will happen in the third episode. Thank you so much for watching. Can't wait to complete this one and start on a whole new story. But before then, we still have a lot of things to find out and learn. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. And if you're on Spotify or iTunes, please give this a rating. Thanks so much, everyone. And I'll see you in episode three.